Quadrant of angels that's encamping around each and every one of us inside Amen. here today. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. Uh, Romans 13, verse 1 says, Let every power be subject unto the higher power. Amen. And then the power that's on this earth Amen. is only allowed by God's power. Amen. 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 So if you think that the devil could try stunt one of God's people even before time. Forget it. Amen. 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 Let every power that's on this earth. Actually, like how Paul puts it, he says, The weapon of my warfare is a carnal, but mighty through God, pulling down straws. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. And you talk about the power that's at the disposal of God's people. It isn't yes, a thing yes. to be taken lightly. It's something to recognize and use wisely. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you. I'll just read you a scripture. Thank you, Lord. Let me first um, welcome everyone. Greetings to everyone, visitors, Amen. everyone, those of brethren we haven't seen for some time. Oh, Pastor Johnson, Elder God, greetings. Elder Thomas, just about everyone. Welcome to the house of God. And I hope by God's grace, as Prophet Asian prayed, that I do not speak my own words, but speak what the Bible says, because it's power Amen. in the word. Amen. Keep referring back to Sister Robinson's yeah. preaching or encouragement as she calls it. Hey. Jesus was a spoken Jesus. word before he even became flesh. Yes. You can't be seeking Jesus every single day of your life mm -hmm. if you're not seeking the word as well. Because yes. Jesus is the word. The word. The word. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Psalm 138 2 says, I've exalted my word above my name. Amen. My Lord. Do you get me? Amen. The name is just the title of who you are, but the word tells you who this person is. Are we following, brethren? Amen. 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 So if you think that you could fight physical, forget it. Mm -hmm. If you think you could see people visually forget it mm -hmm. this is a spiritual warfare and the only way we could go about it is through the word, the word. Amen. paul Amen. says and i thank god first timothy chapter 1 verse 12 and i thank god and i thank christ jesus our lord who had enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy. Mm -hmm. Are we following? Is it on the screen? First mm -hmm. Timothy chapters one from verses twelve. Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Jesus Christ. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to have sinners or to save sinners, sorry, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause I obtained what? Mercy. Mercy. That in me first. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe in him, on him, sorry, to life what? Everlasting. 
And now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. We say this with benediction sometimes in honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Children of God say, Amen. 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 It's only because of Jesus, brethren. Only because of Jesus, brother Byron. It's only because of Jesus yes. that you could have done what you did and we said what we said and been suffering where we've suffered. But now, through Jesus, we can have confidence, brethren. Amen. 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 The Apostle Paul, when he wrote this epistle to Timothy, was reflecting on his own messy life, yes. his own messy state of affairs, yeah. but it's by the grace and mercy yes. of Jesus Christ. Right. John verse 36 says, Whom the Son set free, free. is indeed free. Yes. How more free can you get than that? Right. If Jesus set you free, free. you are indeed free. free. Yes. Who could shackle one of God's children? Talk to me now, church. Talk to me, church. Herod tried it with Peter. He tried it with Paul as well. Boy, you could shackle God's people by the hands and by the feet, yes. but the spirit yes. is still free. Amen. 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 You could lock up this physical body, yes. but the spirit of God is still free. Amen. And that is the power through the word by Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord. This physical body could be physically suffering, but the spirit Thank of God Jesus. is yes. in full health. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Amen. Yes. This physical body, if you mm -hmm. don't understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. could have suffered in many ways, shape, and yes. form, brethren. Yes. This physical body could be even bankrupt. My God. But my spirit free. is rich in Christ. Amen. And is still free. Amen. 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 This physical body might not be popular. Mm -hmm. But my free. spirit is free. Through the freedom is popular with God. Yes. Amen. 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 This body might not be articulate and can say what you want to say, mm -hmm. but my spirit is free. Amen. Is free. Amen. 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 This body might be misunderstood, mm -hmm. might be offended, yes, might be spoken sir. ill of, mm -hmm. but if my spirit mm -hmm. is declared free by Jesus Christ, yes, yes. 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 Free. It's, free. it's indeed free. 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 Do you get the message? Yes. Amen. Amen. No man could shackle one of God's children yes. unless you put yourself in that position. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's the freedom. I'm yes. telling us to embark upon in the power and the authority of God. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless you know, sometimes we tend to go about life and we tend to think that this is what's best for us. <laughs> this is how it's meant to be. And it isn't. Sometimes you think that this is the will of God, but it isn't. It isn't. It isn't. And the reason I say that is that you have to understand if you know that the will of God is free it's free to move where it wants how it wants Hallelujah. through who it yeah. wants yeah. When it yeah. say it how it likes to yeah. Yeah. when it wants Hallelujah. it's free yes. to go backwards and forwards and come again and mash up who choose to mash up and raise up who choose to raise up and tear down in fact King Solomon said, I think it's Proverbs 21, verse 21. Let me not misquote it. Proverbs 21, verse 21. If someone finds it, Proverbs 21, it says, The heart of the king is in God's hands, and like a stream 
He's going to turn it where he will. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. That's the kind of freedom. If you want to tap into the power of this freedom, yes. you have to recognize that it's going to chop and change and there's yes. unpredictable yes. when it Amen. comes to man's Amen. Amen. And that's the freedom birthing. And it's yes. just impressed on my heart to tell you that. It's nothing to do with the topic I want to speak to us about and I won't be long as well. I just want to um, recap and just give us a few final points. <clears throat> if you missed last week, we were speaking about the mark of the beast, the beast system. We've established what the beast is and a few key points. As I said just now, if you want to exercise the power and the freedom of God, nothing will catch the child of God unawares. What you have to do is then um, allow God for his Holy Spirit to direct your lives, direct your path, protect you. Pastor Johnson read Matthew 24 just now. He says, let them that's in Judah run to the hills. Mm -hmm. Even before you know what that means, God already provided a way of escape. Yes. Yes. Yeah? You might not even live to be in physical Judah or in Jerusalem, but when the prophecy is fulfilled, you'll be surprised that mm -hmm. God has already put the way of escape right in front of you now. Yes. Your way of escape is right in front of you now and you don't even recognize it. That's how powerful God is. Right? So it's all about the prophecy, but it's for us to understand. Second Peter 3, I think, verse uh, 8, I think. No, 20 and 21. It says no prophecies of private interpretation. Mm -hmm. yeah? All right. The Spirit of God gives freely. Right? So yes. receive freely today, brother. Amen. 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 Receive freely Amen. through Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So, in the end times, as Pastor Johnson read just now, nations against nations, but more importantly, we're not a nation, so you don't have to worry about that bit. The bit that will affect you, you have to worry about to start with. That bit might affect you in a bit, I'll tell you about that. The bit you have to worry about right now is the devil. He won't use someone who don't speak to you. He won't use someone who's a passerby. The word of God says, daughters against mothers, fathers against son, children, so on and so forth. It means simply that the people that's closer to you is the people that in the last days, yes. the devil is going to use yes, to, attack you. to attack you. My God, to attack you my God. Right? Amen. So, Never if you think that prophecy is just this, whoa, it ain't. Mm. It's happening right on your very nose, yeah? yeah? Right that close. the nearest and dearest, mm -hmm. the devil don't want to kill a friend who is in America. He wants to kill one of your loved ones. Oh, yes. Someone, the devil have that strategy that if he can't shake you, he shake those around yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And before you know it, all your resource and your time is taken up dealing with them. Sister Robin, so much time was telling you must sit properly and keep, just an example by the way, yes. <laughs> you, keep, <laughs> you keep speaking to Sister Robinson because the devil has shaken her. Mm. And I can't get back to the work because I'm busy keeping. Yes, the truth. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. So if you think that prophecy is this high science, forget it. Right in your very family, the yes. devil is shaken. So but the Apostle Paul says, shaken but not stirred. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. It sounds like James Bond now, doesn't it? But you understand. Right? So, the beast is the government, as we have already acknowledged. It says, nations rise up against nations, which pretty much means governments against governments. But I'll speak quickly. What you have to understand is, in times now, no longer a nation can be classified by its geographical boundaries, i.e. the borders of Britain, for example, which surrounds, um, surrounded by the Atlantic Sea, the English Channel, and you know the rest, yeah? There is um, a, what you call a merger or a blending of nations. Don't follow him. So that's why, for example, it's difficult to battle stuff like terrorism, because no longer could Britain go drop a bomb on a foreign country. Pastor Johnson says there's rockets being set up in Japan, North Korea, South Korea, and all the rest of the Pacific Rim. Now, what you find is, is that when the Bible says nations rising up against nations, on the back of it, 
I believe, and I'm not taking the apostle, apostle Paul now is that he's saying opinion different from the word of God. Amen? Because I try not to speak my opinion when it comes to the word of God. But the view that I've come to is upon reading the word of God. It's not written in it that Hals then is in you understand me? Mm -hmm. yes, yeah? yes. Right. I believe and what's fulfilling around us now is that in an attempt to deal with the enemy within, as the government would see it, because nations are merged. I'll give you an example, back in World War One and Two, you could easily bomb Germany or you could arrest a German person and put them in prison because you see them as enemy of the state. Are you following me? Yes. Now, if Britain, for example, is an issue of Germany, you can't do that no more. Because there's many German people living here, for example, right? So, it's no longer a nation state as, uh, in the true sense of the word. Are we following very yeah. Right? On the back of that, I believe, to deal with some of these issues like terrorism, it will create some of the fulfillments to do with the beast and the system. Meaning, for example, if we can no longer define Great Britain as Britain in its true sense with its boundaries, or America as America, Germany, Germany, and other countries, we'll have to come up with a system, which they've started already, to actually track the movement of people. Are we following? Mm -hmm. In Bible time, there's no such thing as a passport. But gradually they realize that each person needs to be identified. Are we following? Yes. So when King Herod, or King C or Caesar's Augustus, sorry, Luke chapter 2, verse 1, actually said he's going to tax the entire world. It's stuff like that. Are we following, brethren? Yeah. Right? And everyone had to go back to their own household and the rest of it. Are we following? Because they want to track the movement of people and who comes from where. Right? So, now governments have realized that passports can't no longer defend their nation states. So they want to become more um, security conscious, shall I say. Are we following, brethren? Mm. So some of these beast system is on the back of some of these seemingly good objectives. Amen? Mm -hmm. Right, that's just one example. Now, you'll find out the reason why I said that. Revelation chapters 12. Uh, Revelation chapters 12. The very last verse, we identified what the dragon was, didn't we? Last week, who was the dragon? Who was the dragon? The devil, Satan, yeah. And the dragon was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, if we... Um, let's deal with the commandments. I'll leave the testimony of Jesus Christ for a minute. But let's deal with the commandments. How many of us have been to a job and can't get it because he says, thou shalt not steal. How many of us have gone for a job because he says, or you never get a job because he says, thou shalt not commit adultery? How many of us have gone for a job he says, thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's ox or ass? We never have problems to get a job because of these, have we? Are we following brethren? Yeah. We're talking about the commandments now. Are we following brethren? Yes, yes. How many of us have ever gone for a job because it says, Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife? And you say, Oh, well, actually, I can't take this job because I've committed, <laughs> committed <laughs> or husband, sister, or sister. <laughs> So it's not just gender bias, you can covet husbands as well, right? So, how many of us have ever gone for jobs like that? And we've never had problems with these parts of the commandments. Are we following? Yes. There's only one sticking part of the commandment yes. that every child of God in the true church has suffered from. And which one is that? Sabbath. The Sabbath day. And we discussed that last week. So do we understand when he says, I keep the commandment? In fact, the beast system or the system of governments now, they've, uh, um, in some way, shape or form, they've created laws governing the next parts of the commandments. Are we following? <coughs> Thou shalt not steal is illegal. Yes. Thou shalt not um, bear false witness, which they classify as slander. Are we following? Yes. Yeah? There's accommodation in the laws, we know it, that accounts with these aspects. Right, Sister D.L.? Okay. <laughs> Tick. 
But the only aspect of the commandment that isn't catered for for the child of God is the Sabbath. So now you understand when someone just says, have some that, the mark of the beast is the Sabbath. It might not be strictly true in the full sense, but it really boils down to that as well, the day of worship. Are we following brethren? Yes. I don't want to just spring it on us. I want to show you how. Are you following brethren? Yes. Yeah? Now, skip over to chapters 13 and verse 16 and 17. Now, we discussed last week that the system that the Bible is warning us against will actually take a commercial or, or an economic form. It says, and he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That no man might not buy or sell, might sorry, buy or sell, save either out of the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right? So we know it's going to take a commercial form as well. Didn't we discuss that? And they said to us that buying and selling doesn't necessarily mean a product or a can of drink or food. You could sell your labor and so forth. Do you remember that? I'm following, yeah? Now, if you skip to chapters 18, this is just the final in the if you like, series of um, topics that we've done. Are we following very yeah? Yes. So chapters 18. <coughs> Let's not even do verse 1 just yet. Let's skip to... And the kings of the earth, remember we identified one system, one church, which as the Bible recognized is referring to as influence over the kings or the governing classes of the world. We identified the Church of Rome and all that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, let me feel like I was the only one here last week. Mm -hmm. yeah. Verse 9 of chapter Revelation chapter 18, And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived maliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of the burning. Skip to verse 11. Please. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thyine wood, sorry, and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and of iron and marble, cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil. Are we getting the picture, brethren? Yes. Can you see the economic aspect now? Yes. Are we following? Yes. Let's be honest. God is a God of wisdom. The scripture is not going to say an iPad and um, laptop. And that wasn't around at that time. Are we following? Yes. Psalm 24 says, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Yeah? So even the materials that made these modern stuff, you can't stop God with this technology. He made them. Yes. Right? But the scripture is really in the context of that time. Are we following, brethren? Yes. yes. And if I keep going, it lists a holy portrayed. Yes. So you see that the beast system will come in its might in a commercial form, right? Mm -hmm. This aspect you're actually reading now is when it starts crashing. This is when God is smashing it up, right? But you see the aspects of the world trade that will take place. Are we following, brethren? Yes. Now, it brings me back to the point I was making about passports and the free movement of people and all that. In a global system where there's um, not so much na um, national boundaries as we know it, are we following, Reverend? Because of economic convergence or coming together, on the back of that, just as our Caesar Augustus in Luke chapters two and one, two verse one actually said, "Go tax the world." On the back of it will come influences. And we spoke about um, the mark of the beast. Where if I be silent, I must be silent, right? I cannot say at, at this point, if there'll be a physical mark, it's possible, but the key aspect you need to understand about the mark of the beast being in the forehead and in your hand, as we've been told many times, is that the forehead represent the seat of intelligence or your thinking capacity. Mm -hmm. And your hand represents the capacity or ability to do things. Are we following, brethren? Yes. So that's the influence that the system wants of you. Now, on the back of this high finance and commerce that you see now, there are very dark forces at play. Pastor Johnson spoke about principalities and powers, for example, the city of London and all these high finances. 
what's going to happen, as it's been happening now, is out of this financial chaos that you see now, I believe that on the back of it, as you started seeing already, will come a structure of global governance. It might not be governance in the outright sense that this is just one president for the entire world, but the more they shake your currency and shake your um, economies and all that, it's the same people comes running with the money saying, do you want to borrow 20 million pounds? In return, you must implement these policies. Are we following? You just yes, need to watch yes, the news. Yes, yes. In return, gay marriage must be legal, for yes, example. Yes. Are we following, Reverend? Yes. In return, these are the policies you must follow. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, either that or face financial ruin, starvation, destitution, and all that, and we know where that leads to, right? That just like what's happening in some parts of the poverty certain parts of the world now. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Mm -hmm. And then people say, hang on a minute, I need some discipline around here. And then a lot of, for example, runs Islam, dole out loads of um, charity stuff, and before you know it, that area becomes a dire area. They become so committed to that following because they provide their sustenance, they provide it. Are we following everything? Yeah, yeah. Right? Now, you may say to yourself, I'm in a minute, De La Vega may say, oh, I'm in a minute, I ain't borrowing 20 billion pounds, so that's nothing to do with me. <laughs> but here's how it hits us now, right? It comes in its more subtle form to each person here. As I pointed out last week, the government is bringing in what they call smart taxes now. Don't tax you like how Caesar tax you, just go get some money. No longer is the government taxing you because they want some money on you. They have what they call smart taxes. And Brethren, I'm not speaking conspiracy theory, because oh. Brethren inside here will tell you that I don't, I don't believe in the, the towers wasn't bombed up in America, but that's something else. I don't know when start throwing stones at me now, yeah? I don't, I'm not a big fan of conspiracy theory, right? There's smart taxations. And the reason why it's called smart is because it's meant to influence behavior. Are we following? Yeah. So you get taxes like green taxes, they call them, so as to commit your, um, reduce your um, carbon emissions. They call it a smart tax, for example. It's meant to be that if I tax a three liter V6, Pastor Johnson's big four by four, yeah? if I give it a hefty road tax, for example, or tax when you buy it, and I reduce the tax on a small um, Anthony's car or a small <laughs> gardener's motorbike, right? If I make that free, for example, no tax on that, which one do you think everyone would more gravitate to buying? Which one do you think? Do you understand me? Right? So the use tax is an instrument to affect your behavior. Are we following? Are we following reference? Yeah. Tell us these things so it doesn't catch us unawares, right? Mm -hmm. Now, for example, the charity commission, we have to do the charity for the church, right? Don't we? Registered charity. This is an next example. So as not to pay this excessive tax on all the rest of it, which I ain't saying is wrong, don't get me wrong. But as a result, in the policies of the Charity Commission, you cannot speak about certain topics, you cannot be seen to be turned on one group or one religion. Are we following Reverend? Yes. So as a result, you have to tone down what you speak, what you say, how you say it. Are we following? Reverend, are we following? Yes. Yes. Because it must lead to community cohesion, right? It must lead to harmony in the community. So Im immediately, you have to possibly change how, you can't even call yourself necessarily a religion or even a religious group. If you're a certain kind of charity, you have to be non-denominational and all the rest of it and the influence that creeps in on the back of it catch us unawares. This is how the system of the beast works. I will follow it briefly. So if you look in an American...
distracting, it's a source of distraction. While you're busy looking that way, they're creeping in for your back door. The devil is tearing down your marriages, tearing down your family relationships. And here what as well. If I went for a job, I'll give you an example now. If you wait for housing on the housing list, if you wait for housing, they give you one house, you say, actually, I don't like the area. <coughs> Fair enough, give you a second house, but don't like the area. On the third time, they say you've made yourself deliberately what? Homeless. Homeless, and you're no longer entitled to what state? Help. Are we following? Yeah. <coughs> At some point, and I'll tell you why I'm saying this, I'm not speaking my own words, and I'll show you in a minute. At some point, it will come around to the point that, why didn't you take this job? Just to be just, why didn't you take that job? Just, why didn't you take this job? Oh, I can't work the Sabbath. One strike, I can't take this job. Two strike, third strike, can't take this job, why? Because of the Sabbath. Three strike, you've made yourself deliberately Homeless. jobless, Homeless. right? Unemployed. Unemployed. You are no longer entitled to what? State health. Strike. Are we following, brethren? Yes. Do you understand? I'm not speaking. This is policies that's at play now. Yes. It's creeping in on the back of the fact there's a financial crisis. Mm -hmm. But these are stuff that's afoot. I mean, that is coming. Yeah, and some of it is here already. Are we following, brethren? Yes. Right? This is the system of the beast that's creeping up on us unawares and the devil is busy distracting us getting us divided as a group getting us fight in fact that's one of the stuff i've realized crept in the church or in the yeah. body of christ is division yeah. if i didn't choose that some ain't seen it yes. if i didn't like that person i didn't listen to them Do you, are you following me brethren yes. this is a trickery of the devil to distract us yes. while the devil himself his job is to accuse us. I pointed that scripture out last week, didn't I? Yeah. Revelation 12, verse 10, I think. He's just busy messing up your life and saying, look, 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 look. See what he done just now with Jesus? Look, 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 look. The same man you say love you just now. Look, what, look, 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 look. He's just accusing us. Are we following? Even though he was the same one who tricked us up. Are you following, brethren? Yes. Are you following? Yes. So this is what I'm trying to say, that we have to be aware. Aware. Right? The things that, and we have to be patient with the people around us that we see suffer or have, in normal terms, say, fallen. It's not for us to decide fallen. Mm. Don't fall in. Mm. Fallen, the devil fell from heaven, but God came to rescue every one of us, yes. right? There's no one of us that's fallen. The word of God says, you fall down, but you must get up. That's, right. that's where the song actually comes from. Mm. It's actually written in the word of God, yeah? fall down seven times. But you must pick yourself up seven times. Are we following, brethren? Yes. Don't let the devil try and have us oh, pack it in, pack it in the church, pack in all that. Revelation chapter 12 says, God gave the woman, referring to the church now, wings. As Brother Anthony pointed out yesterday when we doing a Bible study. It means that to fly away from the dragon. If you want a Hollywood epic, this is one. Are we following? Yes. That you could escape the forces, sorry, of the devil. Stay in the church and in the body of Christ. This system has, it will come, but as Pastor Johnson read in Revelation in Matthew chapter 24, that God is holding back the forces, the four corners of the wind. Mm -hmm. That the elect I would follow him, brethren. You don't, yes, you don't realize what's going on. Yes. If you read the book of Revelation, it's not meant to scare you. It's meant to let you know what's happening. Yes. Right this minute, God is holding back the forces of darkness yes. around you. Yes. Right this minute, mm -hmm. the forces of darkness has been held back so that the elect of God, which is us, could speak freely in that power and that freedom that God gave us, which I spoke of earlier. Are we following? Yes. Receive the freedom, brethren. Now, and I've written down some of the points here that I don't forget. The, I've identified the prophecy as being a Roman government that was, is not, but yet is. I've told you ways in which it creeps into our society. 
that the legal system now, in fact, on the previous empires in the Bible, as soon as they find you guilty, or as Nebuchadnezzar has done, for example, he made a decree and whoever disobeyed it, or Belshazzar as well, whoever yeah. done it, just killed you or throw you the lions then, right? When the Roman Empire took over, as what the prophecy says, he had the feet of a leopard, the head of a lion, and the rest of it means he had the personality or the characteristics of previous empires. So we follow him. Yeah. Now, the Roman Empire, and this is a matter of fact, you could go to the British Library on Euston Road, you know that massive red brick building on the left hand side, just next to Euston Station, you could go and search it, or any libraries that's local. The Roman Empire was the first to develop this legal system that we see in this country. If you read the book of Acts, you see where the Saul was accused that you passed him from one state governor mm -hmm. to a magistrate mm -hmm. before they actually sent him to the main man back in Rome to be tried. Mm -hmm. This is how the, do you see how the magistrate system works yeah. in this country now? Yeah. In fact, at one point, they actually suspended Paul's trial so that they could do a report on it. How many times is the need to see trial suspended now because they need to prepare a report on sharing his mental health before sentences get passed? Yes. Are we following? Yes. This stuff, right now, it was, it is not, but yet it still is. Mm -hmm. What Romans didn't physically create as law, they actually allowed it, or they actually allowed it to happen, mean that they had some policies left over from the Grecian Empire, which was the one before, they allowed it to go on, or they actually brought some new stuff in, right? Stuff, for example, going to the gym, for example, Brother Anthony and Byron loves that. <laughs> the muscle men of the church, right? <laughs> if you read the Maccabees, I don't want to call it Bible, some people call it a book. It's a good historic book. I've spoken to Pastor Johnson about this, that it's not meant to be taken on the equivalent of the Word of God. Just see it as a good record of history, right? Some of the central capitals back then, they used to build gymnasium, right? For exercising and all that. I think Peter in the Bible says too much exercise profit doesn't profit much, right? They used to go and exercise, they used to want the men who work in the, in the palaces looking good. So that's why Daniel was chosen, the three Hebrew boys, because they look physical, statue, strong men, right? Fit Sister Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These gymnasium or exercise, and even on the back of it, right, was born even the Olympics, for example, right? Was because they found it as a good sport, right? The Roman Empire went one step further. They built massive colossums. You see remnants of it in Rome now still standing. For actually making a sport of it and making a sport of God's people being beheaded by lions running around and all that. Are we following yes, yes. It turned a big arena for gathering. Now, what prophecy says it was it isn't, but it still is, meaning the impact of the empire. I spoke to you about the calendars, for example, all that, right? The roads in London, the making of public bathhouses in, in Victoria and Britain. Are we following yes. Britain? Even Britain's DNA of empire building as well, it comes from the Roman Empire. The Europeans, is, their DNA is to keep building an empire. Britain's made a massive empire over the years. France done it, Portugal done it, you have some Portuguese colony. Don't we follow it, yeah. The mindset was already passed down. Brings me back to the issue of sport and the Olympics. You see football popular in this country. What you don't even realize is the Roman influence. Big round stadiums like the Colossians. Are we following? Yes. Arenas. Are we following, yes, Reverend? Yes, yes, yes. It's the same influence that's subliminally been enforced now. You don't even know it. I'm not saying it's a conspiracy. I'm saying that the Bible prophecies I spoke to you last week, it was, it is not, but yet it still is. And every country is adopting this massive arena, round stuff for. Back in the day, the children of God used to get torn apart in the middle of it for sport. I can't say if it will happen again, but it could happen. 
Matthew 24 and Mark 13 says it. What will happen in the last days? If you're on the housetop, you better not come down because there'll be soldiers and bad people in your house rummaging through it. It's happening even now, actually. He says, pray that you fight me not on the Sabbath, meaning that you'll have to do some stuff that's contrary to the Sabbath just to stay alive. Mark actually says, pray that you fight not being in winter. Some churches in Jamaica, America, right, says, don't book your ticket. Silence that baby, please. Don't book your ticket to fly planes on Sabbath. Yeah? This is where people want to twist the word of God, right? I'm not saying that, yes, choose to fly on the Sabbath and conduct your business. What I'm saying is, is that they want to make it sound like it's just a, yeah, don't book your flight on the Sabbath. But really, whilst they still miss the real point, what this is saying is that tribulations will come, that you'll have to do some stuff today. Yes. It's contrary to the Sabbath in the normal context, yes. but just to survive. It goes further. It says that prayer that you're not even giving suck to a baby. So you could afford to flee yourself because you're strong and all that. You need to watch a Hollywood film. And you see when you have a week on behind this, it's, it's, it's a hassle. You understand? Me? These are the the Bible is telling you exactly what will happen, how it will happen, and we just glance over it because we want to get to the happy clappy part of the Bible, right? <laughs> That's not rebuke, by the way, right? But I'm just telling you, it's human instinct to avoid the fearsome bits, right? Now, let me just glance back to this. The Sunday worship. Right this minute, it's actually law and we don't even know it. Right this minute. They have the Sunday Trading Act, which means that on Sundays you can only trade for six hours because they see it as a Sabbath or day of worship. So that's why you see businesses open between 10 to 4 or 11 to 5. Maximum six hours. Minus last year because it was the Queen's Jubilee and the Olympics that made um, extensions. Right? This is actually law and we don't even know it. But guess how they actually brought it in? <coughs> I need to drink for this one. <laughs> <laughs> they actually said that, for example, you may think my head's going off now. If I tell you that 13th of the 4th of the 13th, today's day, okay. yeah? You think, hang on a minute, but which 13 is actually the day? Because today's the 13th, yes. the th one three is a year, isn't it? Yes. And the all four is a month. Yeah. It's even get more tricky. If you go to America, they put the day before the month, yeah. they reverse yeah. it. Yeah. And it, it confuses people. So what they decide is we need to have a universal system. This thing passes, you see when you see stuff says BS. Yes. BS, long numbers. You yes. know what you see on the products, it says yes. BS. Yes. British yes. standard, yes. thank you, Earl G. It means that the government decide that if we're going to make um, an electric plug, for example, there needs to be certain standard or standardization that the product must be made to this specification, that it has certain safety features, certain dimensions and all that. Are we following very yes. Made yes. from certain fireproof materials, for example, yes. so that if I imprint the in, uh, import the exact product from China, it needs to match that given standard and it will function in British home to the required standard for its intended purpose. Are we following? Yes. Yes. So if I says that this TV is to BS numbers, numbers, whatever, it must match a certain given specification that when it comes to this country must work. Are we following? Yes. That's what standardization means. Yes. Now ISO, that's only Britain, BS, British standard. ISO, it's actually an organization. It's, it tries to do the same thing on a global scale. ISO, it actually means International Organization of Standardization. Yeah. Don't let the place of the O and the S fool you. Yeah? It's not, it's actually ISO, but in reading it, or the actual name, it's actually, inter, the O comes before the S. International Organization for Standardization. Very following. So it seeks to do this exact same Thing, thing on a global scale, so as to what they call now an harmonization of the date calendar. Are we following? Mm. So if I say to you, 13.04.13, wherever you are in the world, you need to know that it actually means this is the month, that is the day, that is the year. Are we following? Mm. 
So it's on the back of that they brought it in. Now, the tricky bit is, is that they said, hang on a minute, but we don't know which day is the seventh day. But this was declared from the time in the Roman Empire and by um, various popes. They've tried changing, as Daniel 7.25 says, if you put down the background keys, they'll think to change times and laws. Right? They've already tried changing the Sabbath to Sunday. What they've done now is actually counted Sunday as day seven. So you'll find them, um, you'll find the new date system will actually be, give an example, 2003, no, today's what? 2013, sorry, <laughs> today's You see, 2013, so that's 2013, W, 15, I'll explain to you in a minute, 7, or actually 6. That's the international standardization of the date. You see it around you, you might not even recognize it. What it actually means is year 2013, W means week 15, thank you. Right? Day 6, because they see today as day 6. Are we following? Yes. Never mind the month, because they're going by weeks. There's 52 weeks in the year, so we'll always count up to 52. Some businesses do it right now. If you fill out certain legal law books at work now, thank you, Orija, thank you. So it's week four of of um of 52 weeks. They're not counting by month because month is just when you are free to worship. <laughs> we're dealing with um, months by our system now. They're counting as week. Do you, do you understand, mm -hmm. Brother Adrian? While well, you're on your phone, yeah. I'm checking. No, no, that's what I'm gonna ask you to check for me. While you're on your phone. Can you Google, this is how you Google the seven years of Rome last week. Google ISO uh, 1801. 1801, let me just make sure I get that right. 8601, sorry. 8601. 8601. Yep. Brethren, just before you even read that, while you do that, I've said this in Bible study on Wednesday nights. When you do your research or study, do not just jump in at the topic, because they're misleading. The internet, for example, has many Commentary. commentaries, and it's just opinions, yeah? No, you're going to read it in a minute, you can... Oh, oh okay, so. Yeah, you can use that one, or even that one as well, it doesn't matter. Both of them will tell you in a minute, yeah? Um, if you jump in at a topic, you'll be misled. If you jump in and says, say, when did Pastor Johnson change, um, for example, day of worship from Sabbath to Sunday, you'll get many commentaries try to twist you and throw you off the topic. Are we following very And it's the same thing they've done with um, 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 Pastor Johnson, help me out here, on um, Pope Gregory, the 13th. Yeah. If you jump in and say, when he changed it from Sunday to Sabbath, from Sabbath to Sunday, Stories and stories and stories and my goldfish died last week, yeah? Mm -hmm. Just to try to put you off. But if you go at it from who was Pope Gregory? They want to show off all his talents and his global achievement and then somewhere buried here. How we following Gregory? Mm -hmm. You see where that's what he's claiming to fame is as well. It's one of his big achievements is that knowledge. Are we following Gregory? Yes. So sometimes Change the calendar, you know, into Gregorian calendar. I'm referring back to what we, for those of us who come Bible study on Wednesday night, yeah? So we know about Roman, the Gregorian calendar, what we call it, Roman calendar. The change of the um, months and years and number of days in a month, and all that. but that's something else, right? So that's an example, right, of how you should study. Study in a cross-referencing manner. Are we following Yep. Yeah? Keep saying this, that Daniel, I have to show us it. It's so fascinating. I'm coming down. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be finishing a minute here. Yeah? I keep referring to this, so I'll have to share it with the church in general. Daniel, Daniel chapter um, I think 9 verse 1, Adrian, please. 
Daniel chapter 9, verse, I think one, one letter. How we call it, yeah? In Ireland, for example, and some strict Catholic countries, you can't even play football on Sundays or even do horse racing, right? Yeah. People protest out front. Are we following? So there's some countries that's actually strongly ahead of it, right? Now, in this aspect that I think will have some impact on God's people is technology. You've been hearing about cashless societies for a long time, haven't we? In my borough, they've stripped out all the cash counters and cash offices. You must now do everything online. And for the elderly, they're actually trying to give you what they call an internet buddy. Someone like, for example, your daughter and your family to teach you funny that is you can't use internet, for example. <laughs> Are we following reverend? Right? I actually went to a business yesterday and some silly stuff that they're actually bringing in. They actually tell you it's because to reduce or stop um, international money laundering, right? So they need a million forms of ID. And even now, you can't even sell scrap metal. God bless who stole the lead from the roof. You can't sell scrap metal by cash, for example. It needs to be, they say it outright on TV. It needs to be by check or into a bank account. Why? So that it could be what? Traced. They said it. All right. I'm following. Yeah. If, if the government is becoming, shall I say, shameless in telling you why they want it done, you could see the translation quite easily because you see where I've showed you where the system to come will take on a mighty commercial form. Are we following? Yes. It will become less and less possible now. For example, it comes back to smart taxation, which I told you. The Oyster card, they make cash payments more expensive. Are you following? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost you. Yeah, yeah. So as to incentivize you going for the cheaper option, because in the name of terrorism, they want to be able to track every movement so they can tell that actually that card was actually topped up by this debit card and so on and so forth. Are you following? Yes. You see, you see where I'm going? Yeah? So technology. Social media is you put all your business online. You put all your stories online. You say actually I'm going um, to this restaurant tonight, they know exactly like 7 o'clock you're going to this restaurant. Some of us, we love to show our friends, oh, look at the picture, this nice food. Simone, for example, <laughs> went out with our friends this week and every time you can get fancy pictures of fancy foods. <laughs> they know even exactly what you're eating, for example, right? Touch off a button. The law, Sister Vita prepared me for this. The Malicious Communications Act and various acts of parliament is struggling how to keep up with malicious stuff said online. You've seen it with all that um, phone tapping business and that. Uh, yes. yeah? So they are changing the law now so as to make every comment done online legal or illegal. Are we following me? Yeah. So you've exposed yourself to talking even now, eh? And this is not conspiracy. This is even street smart behavior as well. A burglar who is... Um, you see that all the time, they're robbing footballers. They said, all right, the game kicks off at um, 7 p.m. And by the way, he just tweeted that Ronaldo actually has a new haircut. So yeah, we're going to brag his house now. You, don't you see that on TV yes, all the time? Yes, yes, yes. Right? So on the back of technology, brethren, there's TVs with cameras in the front. Every phone now has a camera facing forwards. Touch of a button should the system be up on you and you choose not to obey their rules, they could log in anywhere they want and see who's on that phone, for example. Mm -hmm. Are we following Reverend? Yes. So, in all humility and saying this, and it's not written in the word, but the principle of it I've learned, and it's purely by studying God's word. <coughs> Some of the stuff I'm saying, it might not be written, thou shall have an iPhone, as I said, thou shall put on an iPhone. But you can understand the principles that I'm telling you. Are we following very yes, yes. Right? So that when time to come and you have to escape to the hills, the word of God says, I think Psalm chapter 122, verse 6, Pastor John says, Oh, I say this. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And it goes on to say, those who pray for Jerusalem will find peace. Yes. Jerusalem or Israel right now is actually the thermometer of the world. When you see hot up in the Middle East, it's hot not globally. How are we following? Yes. There's a lot of prophecies we could go into, but I don't want to go into that now, right? 
But suffice to say, it was about the Battle of Armageddon. In the end, the world and its powers is going to converge on Israel to try to smash it. And that's after they try overrunning the church. That's why the word of God says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So when you read Matthew 24, and it says, those that are in Judah, the feet of the hills, I told you just now that the way of escape, um, escape God's already made it ready. So no weapons formed against us shall prosper. Amen? Yes. Amen? Amen? And the last point I'd like to tell us, or speak to us about, sorry, is Revelation chapter 14. Daniel says, in summary, I'll be quick, he saw six angels, but the third angel, and you must have keep hearing this, the third angel message, why is the church preaching the third angel message? This is the significance of it, yeah? Every angel Daniel saw, mm -hmm. I've got time to show us now, mm -hmm. is actually telling you, at first he tells you that listen to God and obey him and do this and the gospel is coming. That's the first angel. He let you know you have no excuse. Mm -hmm. Romans 2 verse 1 says, Thou man, thou art inexcusable. Mm -hmm. You heard it, right? So the first angel then tell you this is it. The next angel built it up, built it up. But the third angel is the only angel which told you, I'll read it. I'll read it. Let me tell you what the third angel message says. The third angel message, Revelation 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark in, in his hands. Who receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. That's the third angel message. It tells you explicitly, don't fall under the influence of this system. Run, make an escape from the system. Do you understand the third angel message is very good? It's the only angel that gave the chance for you to escape. You've been told what it is, you've been told what to do, you've been told that you need to escape it and don't do it. That's his third angel message in summary. The next angels follow until the very last angel put in fire. Do you want to see it? Go to verse 15. And another angel came out of the temple crying to a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, trust in the citadel and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest on earth is ripe. This is God coming back for his people now. It's yes, no sir. time. The word says, let him that is holy be holy yes, still. Yeah. And it goes on, right? You've been told. Are we following, brethren? Yes. Right? You think, some people like to think that white people don't even know about this. But they do. Yes. But they don't want to hear it. Exactly. Right? America is a fantastic country with white Christians and white people of God worshipping them. This isn't about a black business. Are we following, brethren? Yes. They know it. Jesus said, go into all the world, preach the gospel. Yes. They know it. Yes. Right? But in some countries, they'd rather kill you for preaching the gospel. They know it. The word says you are inexcusable. Right? And go to the... Read the rest of it. Verse 17. Now, another angel came out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also had a sharp sickle. So this angel is coming to reap as well. Yeah. If I come with the same tool that you come with, I come to do the same work you come with. Yeah. Are we following, brethren? Yeah. And another angel came out from the altar, verse 18, which had power over fire. <laughs> And cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle. You see, you see, you see it now, yeah? Yes. It's no more speech time until you fix up on who is holy and who is righteous. Be righteous. In my words, now God, don't talk now. Yes. Yeah? Yes. 
Yes. He sent his son, you killed him. Yes. You preach the gospel, you never want to hear it. Yes. The pastor tell you a long time, fix up, you don't want to hear it. Yes. He sent his Holy Spirit in the sleep at night that you need to fix up and you don't want to hear it. Yes. Are we following? Yes. He sent a brother or sister to advise you that you need to fix up. Yes. They don't want it. The psalmist David said, All that, my steps. Yes. Yes. My Lord, my Lord. In your word. Yes. Are we following? Yes. Right? So after that now. God finished speaking. And he says, those who deny his son when he comes back riding on horses with his angels, right? He called it the cavalry now. If you think your boyfriend or being popular or dressing nice and all fashionable is going to save you, forget it. If you think you're in with the crowd and that's going to save you, you know, forget it. Yeah. Right? If you think you're having a good time doing what you're doing outside of church, now forget it. Yes. The Word of God says you're going to run to the mountains and beg it to fall on you. Mm. You see people chat about euthanasia now where they think that they could kill themselves because they're having enough of this pain. Come that time, you're going to ask the mountains to fall. Fall yes, on you and then even yes. the mountains run oh from you. Yes. Nothing to do. You're going to face the judgment of God himself. Yes. The power of the Almighty God. Are we following, brethren? Amen? Yes, brother. Amen. So, my advice to us is to stay in the Word. Yes. God don't make a way of escape for you. Yes. Nothing to be careful of. Amen. Right? Um, First Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For bring it up. Has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power. Thanks, Pastor Johnson, for that text. And of a sound mind. Don't panic around you, right? Of love and of power, but the power comes through Jesus Christ. Amen? Mm. Don't get twisted and turned by man's power. Mm. You want the microphone and you want the big chair and you mm. want to sit on the drums. Mm. Sister Val done a presentation about power and authority. Yes. They might be in power to do certain things, but if God hasn't authorized it, forget it. Mm. This power is true power. Mm. It needs to be practiced through Christ in your mm. marriages, in your friendships, in the church, in work, and all the rest of it. Through power comes through Christ, through his word. Brother Adrian, I'm closing this minute. Can you read it? Anything that you found? Um, That's referenced to David. Please. That, it starts on Monday and the seventh day is Sunday on calendar. Okay. And the purpose of it is to make a standard that's unambiguous and well-defined and it's used by most countries in the world. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Brother Adrian. Brethren, you see what I'm saying just now, right? Are you following? Yeah. You could go actually go on the website itself, right? The ISO's website. Many people now is rushing towards getting an ISO um, classification, yeah? So, organic farmers, for example, manufacturers, businesses, is trying to get ISO classifications, just as though everyone's rushing to get a fair trade um, label. Are we following, Brother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Brother Adrian read it just now, that it's supposed to create ambiguity on a global scale about dates and times and all that. So they bring in this system so as to try and harmonize global trade. And they've made Sabbath the sixth day and Sunday day seven. Don't be caught up, brethren. Stay in the word, right? And be free in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. A few words to you. Amen.